Hi there, this is Dr. Evan Osar with the Institute for Integrative Health and Fitness Education. Welcome to this edition of Integrative Movement Insider. Happy Tuesday, hope your week is started out well. In last week's edition, I shot a video discussing the arch of the foot. And we actually have a foot with us right here again today. And we talked about the importance of the muscles of the foot and why it's important for you as a health and fitness professional to understand functional anatomy, what muscles really do, and how the nervous system works to use these muscles in the most optimal manner to create the best opportunity for alignment, for posture, for movement. So we talked about last week the importance of the foot and why it's important to get the weight on the foot tripod because the foot tripod underneath here, hey Rahul, my, my friend over there in, in India, the, remember the foot tripod is the, most of the weight should be underneath the big toe, the metatarsal phalangeal joint of the first toe, the fifth toe, the metatarsal phalangeal joint of the fifth toe, and the heel. And basically equal between the heel as well, the weight inside and outside the heel because many of our clients have too much of the weight on the outside of their heel, and that will often necessitate the client needing to start to bring the arch of the foot down to try to get weight underneath the big toe. And we discussed the importance of that last week, and I shared with you a strategy for helping your clients get that big toe down to the foot. Because remember, the big toe of the foot is a support on the inside of your foot, so it's really that inside sort of leg of the tripod or point of the tripod, and it's also the, almost the last point of the foot to leave the ground as you push off. So you need to load that portion of the foot appropriately so that way you get the appropriate push off during the push off phase of the gait cycle. Now, this week, as I mentioned to you in the last edition, let's talk about what happens if your client doesn't have a high arch rigid foot like I personally have and many of my clients that I see in my office have that same type of foot type. What about those clients that actually have the navicular drop? So if you look here, this bone right here, so you have your calcaneus here, your heel bone here, you have your talus sitting on top of the calcaneus, and then the bone right medial and distal to that bone is your navicular bone. So if you actually feel your foot, let me step back here a little bit, so you can bring my foot up here. If you feel your medial malleolus, so this bone right here, if you go down and, so if you go inferior and just slightly anterior, you'll feel that bone sticking up. That's your navicular tuberosity. That's this bone right here, navicular tuberosity. The true flat foot is really the foot where the navicular tuberosity is sitting down upon the floor. <clears throat> Those are the individuals that you, you will notice their foot is flat and that bone is down on the floor. Many of your clients have a functional flat foot, which is actually okay as long as they're supporting well upon the foot tripod. So the flat foot is not the issue, it's that functional flat foot. I should say the structural flat foot where this bone is actually sitting on the floor. So they no longer have, the client no longer has a foot tripod. They actually have almost like a quadruped foot where their weight is underneath the big toe, small toe, the navicular bone, and the heel. We do not want that. That's where your client needs to start to work the muscles of the arch. And the muscles of the arch, one of the most important muscles, not the only muscle, but one of the specific muscles that helps to control the arch is the abductor halysis. Hey Eric, my, my good buddy Eric Berrien, how are you doing my friend? Um, thank you for tuning in. So the abductor halysis attaches from the inside of the heel here and goes underneath the arch to the base of that metatarsal phalangeal joint. In fact, it actually attaches right here. If you can kind of see right there, you see that little, those little letters there, AH, the abductor halysis. So basically what it does is it takes your big toe, so this is my right foot, so it takes the big toe and it takes it and abducts it. So it brings it away from midline. And if you look at your clients that have the valgus toe or the, the hallux valgus or that bunion formation, the hallux valgus is basically the toe's gone in this direction. It's gone away from the midline of the foot. So the abductor halysis, for some reason, multiple reasons often, oftentimes, is not doing its job to bring that big toe out. And that's why we really focus on the foot tripod and getting separation of the big toe from the small toe. What it also does though, it will also bring the arch of the foot, that medial arch, the medial longitudinal arch, it will bring that arch up or lift that arch. So in many of your clients like myself, who has got a very high arch rigid foot, many times you have to release this muscle to allow that muscle to, to elongate and allow the arch to come down when you're loading. However, in the client with that true flat foot where the navicular bone is down, you have to activate this muscle to help bring that arch back up. So let me bring you down here just for a moment. Let me show you what this exercise looks like. Now, this is often called the short foot. This is one of the few moments or few times, I should say, one of the moments where the 
where the short foot is actually quite appropriate. So let me place my foot over here. So what you'll see is if you have a flat foot where the navicular bone is actually down upon the floor, so let me do it from this angle first. So if the foot is actually down upon the floor like that, you would start to activate this muscle by bringing the backside of the toe, let me show you on these, on the model here, you'll bring the backside of this toe or this joint here, you'll bring it back this direction towards the heel by activating the foot, which basically will take your, your arch that's more flat and start to lift it up. However, you gotta make sure, you wanna make sure that the big toe stays down on the ground so that when you're doing the short foot or lifting that arch up, that you're not simply just rolling to the outside of the foot because here's what a lot of clients will do. They'll, they'll do the short foot or they'll think they're doing the short foot and then they'll just roll to the outside of the foot and basically do this with their legs. So they're basically just basically inverting their foot and bringing that big toe off the floor. I've seen many clients actually create a hallux valgus because they've done this and they've created too much compression of that first metatarsal phalangeal joint. So it's gotta be very specific how you do it. So let me do it on my left foot. So come back here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna to try to simulate a dropped arch, but I don't, like, like I said, I have a very high arch rigid foot, so that doesn't work so well on my foot. So what I'm going to do now is bring the backside of that metatarsal phalangeal joint towards the heel but keep that big toe, the, the ball of the big toe down on the ground. So I'm gonna elongate it and allow my arch to drop down and then bring that backside of that joint, the underside I should say, towards the heel to lift that navicular bone back up and create more of that medial longitudinal arch. I also want the tibia relatively over top the foot. I don't want the tibia way back here like that in plantar flexion. I actually want it to be more neutral there as I do this. So I'll, I will elongate the arch here, allowing the navicular bone to drop down and then bring that arch, that bring a big toe back towards the heel to lift that arch and I'll hold it for an isometric count of five to 10 seconds. Obviously you also want to train your client when they hold that short foot, once they develop the endurance, you also wanna teach them how to squat and load that while maintaining the foot tripod. So you wanna make sure that they maintain that foot tripod and when they're squatting or lunging or doing those exercises, they're not just collapsing the arch back down. So it's important not just to do the isometric position, but then also do a functional pattern like a squat, teaching them how to maintain that foot tripod. So weight underneath big toe, small toe, heel, and maintain that arch through their squat position. So that way you get the abductor halysis and the other foot intrinsic muscles working, as well as you teach the client how to functionally control that arch and ultimately develop better control. And we've seen clients that have actually improved their foot, have been able to lift that navicular bone up, restore integrity of their feet, get out of their orthotics, which is really awesome for a lot of our clients. We've gotten them out of their orthotics when you get the foot muscles working better, when you get the support underneath a big toe, small toe heel, so you get that foot tripod working better, you really give them back the opportunity to use the foot muscles appropriately, to use their feet appropriately, to improve proprioception through the foot, ultimately through the lower extremity, and then their posture improves, their proprioception improves, their movement patterns improve, and now they don't have to keep spending money on new orthotics or, or and actually saw, you'll solve a lot of these clients' chronic foot issues. Now, just one thing before we end up, Hopefully you enjoyed that segment and it made a lot of sense how to, how to use a short foot, but then also when to use it. And the short foot should not be used by every single client. Even though the research does say that the short foot does improve the intrinsic muscle activation, it does, but it's not appropriate for everyone. When you have the short, when you have the navicular drop, absolutely, or, or that really collapsed arch, that's when it's appropriate to use short foot and then also train it in a functional position like a squat and or split squat and or lunge type position. However, like I said, some clients do also need orthotics because some clients I've worked with many patients that, I want to say many, relatively many, not every patient that has orthotics needs orthotics. A lot of patients don't need orthotics when you train them appropriately and you progress them appropriately. However, there are clients that do need it. For example, my client Ellis, when he came to me, he had a very flat foot, navicular drop, he also has diabetic neuropathy. He's got spinal stenosis. So he's got a lot of proprioceptive issues on that side. He also had a previous injury. I worked real hard on getting him to activate that arch, to tape his foot. I did a lot of exercises with his foot. 
was never able to change that foot, so he actually needs orthotics because he's, he's lost the structural integrity of the ligaments, the fascia connections between the muscles, I should say, between the bones and joints of the foot, so he does need an orthotic. Some clients need orthotics, some clients do not need orthotics. So we can get a lot of our clients out of the orthotics, again, stay within the scope of your practice, but a lot of your clients will actually improve to the point where they do not need their orthotics or they can use their orthotics a lot less of the day, more, more period of the day without orthotics. So that way you really give them back the integrity of the foot. Like I said, you improve proprioception and you really help their posture as well as their movement strategy. And that's really what this, this approach is really all about. Helping your clients optimize their posture, their movement, so they can do the things they need to, want to, and ultimately return to many of the things that they love to do. So I hope you enjoyed this segment. And two anatomy geeks, like my friend Rahul um, was suggesting here, he's like, hey, are you going to go into more depth in two anatomy geeks? Absolutely. Jill and I, the, my fellow anatomy geek, she will be joining me for a brand new series on the foot and ankle. So we've got four segments, so it's an hour, four hours worth of information. But we always go over. We always go over because we love this information. We love sharing with you, answering questions. So it's always more than an hour. But we're going to go over the intrinsic muscles of the foot so you know exactly how these intrinsic muscles work, how to activate them, how to release them, how to know when to activate and to release them. We'll go through the more superficial muscles like the gastroxoleus, the anterior tibialis, the extensors of the toes, show you how to develop optimal control of those muscles as well, how to, to create better synergy between the deep and superficial muscles. So that way you really help clients because when you, there's a couple of things that, that I truly believe that will change your clients' lives. Number one, breathing. That's why we talk about breathing so much. Breathing will change your clients' lives when they learn how to optimize three-dimensional breathing. And number two is the foot. If you can get the foot optimized in your clients or even get it better, right? You don't even need to make it 100% perfect. You just have to get it better. You will change your proprioception. You'll change your ability to stand, balance. You'll reduce the incidence of falls in your, in your older adults. And this is actually active aging week. So this, that's a great thing for our active aging population. And the third thing that really changes people's lives from a move, movement standpoint is the hip hinge. So get the foot tripod, three-dimensional breathing, and teach your clients how to hip hinge. You can truly transform people's lives with this information. And we see it every day in our clinic. My wife actually had painful bunions from the time she was 12. She was told she was going to need bunion surgery. They were going to break their toes, put pins in her toes, straighten them out. And she literally did the exercises that we'll share with you in the Tune Anatomy Geek series. She has no longer painful bunions except for when we're dancing and I step on her feet. <laughs> That's why she says to me, she's like, she's like, just stand there. Let me dance around you. Um, so yeah, so it's crazy how different these exercises, how different the foot can function when you use the foot appropriately, when you teach the muscles to do what they're supposed to intended to do. When you get people out of shoes and get people into more minimal shoes, the people that you can, your clients that you can, it's truly life changing for a lot of clients. So like I said, my wife has no longer has painful bunions. Her toes are actually straighter than, than they ever were probably in, in almost in her entire life. So it's truly, truly possible to change people's feet when you use the right strategy. We'll share that strategy with you and we'll look forward to seeing you again on To Anatomy Geeks. Mary's gonna put the link next to this video. Thank you again for being on. My good buddy Pete from back home in New Jersey. Love you for being on. Thanks for, thanks for always supporting our, our work as well. Make it a great day. This is Dr. Evan Osar with the Institute for Integrative Health and Fitness Education. Oh, also this Friday, we're, we're joining our friends at the Active Aging, Rehab, and Fitness Summits, where we bring together our, our friends over at the Functional Aging Institute, Dr. Dan Ritchie and Cody Seip. They're bringing together health and fitness professionals to work together to really create this team approach to, to active aging. And this is Active Aging Week, so this is a perfect opportunity for this conference. It's a one-day conference. If you use our code, I think it's Evan, E-V-A-N 15, you save $15 on the enrollment. It's a one-day event with multiple speakers talking about posture, balance, movement, how to communicate and educate your older population, how to be that specialist for the active aging adult population. So hope to see you there as well. Mary will put the, Mary will put the link to that as well. So thanks so much. Appreciate all you do. If there's anything we can do to help support you, please let us know. Make it a great day. We'll see you next time here at the Integrative Movement Insider.